Hi folks, Paul Grun here. I've spoken a lot about this book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. In another video, I covered six steps that financially successful people do. In another, I covered 10 things that financially unsuccessful people have in common. Hill's list was actually longer than that, I just covered the top 10. Here I'd like to cover the 13 things that financially successful people have in common. It's really the, the whole book, multiple chapters covering each of these individually. And Hill came up with this list after interviewing 25,000 people over two decades. And those interviews included the wealthiest people in the U.S. at the time. In fact, the whole idea for the book came up during an interview he did with Andrew Carnegie, the richest man in the world at the time. The book was first published in 1937. It shows that, the original unedited 1937 text. And it's been a bestseller ever since then. Now, the book was not written to entertain. It's definitely not a novel. It's a work that needs to be studied, digested, and thought about. And he suggests reading no more than one chapter a day. And it's the kind of thing you definitely need to reread. So here are the 13 things, and these are in his order. First is desire. You need a burning desire for whatever it is that you want. So it's not a wish. It's a definite, strong desire. It's either win or perish. Essentially burn your bridges. There is no going back. Two is faith. You need to be able to visualize what you want and believe that you can attain it. It's a state of mind that you can create by following the next step, which is three auto-suggestion. Now, I covered in another video the six steps that people need to do to be financially successful, and he'll cover that in the earlier chapter on desire, but here he's talking about auto-suggestion, and what that is is reading your written statement of goals and reading that twice a day. And you need to read it with emotion. You need to see and feel yourself already in possession of whatever it is that you want. You need to see yourself giving the service or whatever you intend to do in return for your reward. Your subconscious will incorporate that over time. In a sense, it's like smiling and being happy. This is my thought, not his. You may not feel happy, but if you smile, you'll, over time, become happy. Four is specialized knowledge. Now, knowledge is not power. He repeats that a lot. The professors in college have knowledge. But how rich and powerful are they? They teach knowledge, but not its organization or its use. It's the application of knowledge that leads to wealth and power. So whatever you intend to accomplish, you need to learn the specialized skills and knowledge that will be necessary. And that does not mean going to college and getting a four-year degree. Henry Ford only had a sixth grade education, and Thomas Edison only had three months of schooling. Five is imagination. You've got to imagine something before you can actually create it. It's pretty simple. Six is organized planning. What are you going to do or offer others? I mean, you need to develop a written plan. And if at first your plan doesn't work, change it. It's like essentially you're in a sailboat and occasionally you need to adjust the sails. Seven is decision. All the people Hill interviewed, the successful wealthy people, said they reach their decisions quickly 
and change their decisions, if at all, very slowly. And Hill found that the financially unsuccessful people were just the opposite. They reached decisions, if at all, very slowly, and they changed their decisions quickly and often. So don't be swayed by the opinions of others. Opinions are worth what you pay for them. Um, and if you are, it just means you really have no desire of your own. Eight is persistence, and that requires willpower. Simply put, don't give up. Temporary defeat is not permanent failure. For example, did you know that it took Edison 10,000 attempts to develop the incandescent light? Think about that. He essentially failed 10,000 times. Where would the world be if he gave up? Nine is what he calls the power of the mastermind. He talks about forming your own mastermind alliance. Essentially what that is is you need to align yourself with as many people as you need to carry out your plan. So find people with the experience, the education, ability, and imagination that you need. And you'll need to decide what you can offer them in return for their cooperation. So meet with that group at least weekly because you'll be able to accomplish more as a group than any individual can on their own. Carnegie, Edison, Ford, Rockefeller, they all did this, all the successful people. 10 is, and I'll just call this one love. He had a different phrase. Uh, all great people have had someone they love supporting and motivating them. It's hard to be happy, complete, and successful without the right person in your life. 11 is the subconscious mind. Your subconscious works day and night, and you can't control it entirely, but using auto-suggestion, and the other habits that I've covered over time, your mind will achieve the goals. Twelve is the brain. I didn't make any highlights or notes in this chapter. Hill gets a bit esoteric with this one, but it's obviously the brain that's putting all your habits together to achieve the success that you desire. And finally, thirteen, the sixth sense. I suppose you've all heard about that. Uh, it's a portion of your unconscious mind. It, that's where you get your flashes of ideas and plans and hunches and inspiration. You could call it intuition. Hill himself even said it defies description. And there's a final chapter in the book that talks about how to overcome your fears. Everybody has fears. The six biggies are the fear of poverty, criticism, poor health, loss of love, old age, and death. But fears are really nothing more than just a state of mind. They can be controlled, but that's obviously not easy. And most people in network marketing have heard the phrase that fear, it's an acronym, it stands for false evidence appearing real. I like that. So there you go. Now, obviously, this summary hardly does justice to the whole book. Uh, there's obviously a lot more detail than I've been able to cover here. So if you're interested in achieving financial success and freedom, I'd certainly encourage you to give it a read. Again, it's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment below or message me. Uh, you may also be interested in many other videos I've done on this and other similar topics on my YouTube channel, and you can find a link for that in my profile. So that's all for now. See you next time.